Today's short talk is by Brother Muhammad Latif. If he could welcome him forward with a salwat. Muhammad is a Danish Iraqi born in Kuwait and brought up in Dubai. He is currently training as an oncologist and balances the day jobs with hobbies, the guitar, angst-ridden short stories, and most important, classic film and literature. Today he's going to be speaking to us about who are you. Indeed. Who are you? Let's see if this works. There we go. Or rather, actually, when I asked myself this question quite often when I was growing up, who am I? Um, and there's no doubt why I asked myself this question, especially with that introduction. And you heard I've got quite a sort of diverse background and a very confused upbringing. Um, but actually, the reason why I brought, you to, brought it to you today, this question of who are you, is although it's a simple question, it's very likely to have a simple answer. I think that answer itself is actually quite profound when it comes to not just who you are as a person, but actually with regards to your self-betterment, but also your place within society. And actually, the way I was going to bring it across today was I remember when I used to visit my family in Qatar. And I used to try to think about these things all the time. And I came up with a, you know, a thought experiment one day that helped answer this question. And it's, it's a bit of a flawed thought experiment, but I want you to bear with me because I think the conclusion is actually quite gratifying. So I want you to bear with me and imagine the following. I want you to imagine that you're sitting or standing in a park. You're minding your own business and doing what most people do in the park. I don't know, feeding ducks or walking the dog or whatever it is people do in the park these days. When actually you just get approached by an elderly gentleman who you've never met before, never seen them before, they just come right at you and they poke you right in the face and they go, who are you? Quite aggressively. And you just on the spot feel like you have to answer that question. So on instinct, how does this work? Oh, is it down? My bad. There we go. So, on instinct, the first thing you're going to think about answering this man is with your name. You're going to say, well, I'm Muhammad Latif. But actually, is that actually who you are? If you put my name into Google, there's lots of Muhammad Latifs everywhere, all around the globe. And not just that, there's Muhammad Latifs that are born where I've been born, and probably born on my date of birth as well. So the demographics on your birth certificate aren't actually who you are. That's completely irrelevant. It's not going to actually answer this question of who you are. So we might as well take it to the next level. Think, okay, how else am I going to be a bit unique? How am I actually going to prove to this man who I am? Which moves us on to the next step, which is you, your physical body, your physical representation of yourself. It can't be more unique than that, surely. All the way down to your DNA. It can't be more unique than that, your genetics. But actually, if I had a twin brother, you can't say that we're both exactly the same person, can you? That's rather unfair. So you're stuck again. You think, okay, this man's looking at me quite angrily. I really have to answer him quite quickly. So you move on to the next step. You think, well, if it's not the hardware, is it the software? You think, is it the mind or the soul? And you think, okay, this is finally an answer I can give this man. This is finally something that's unique to me. No one else is going to have my soul or my character or my mind. But when you try to explain this to this, to this man, this gentleman, you struggle because... The problem is this is a metaphysical argument you're trying to give him for something quite physical that he's asking you, something quite tangible. It's quite difficult to consolidate the mind or the soul to the realities of life here today at the moment. And whilst you're struggling to give him this answer, which you think actually might be the right one, you're saved. Because all of a sudden, one of your friends walks down the path in the park. The old man notices this, points at you, waves at the friend and goes, come here, come here. Points at you and goes, who is this? It's quite, it's quite bizarre because all of a sudden, with great ease, you've struggled to answer this question so far, with great ease, they turn around and go, oh, this is Muhammad, I know him from work, I work with him, he's, you know, an SHO on the ward at the moment, he's hoping to become a registrar in a couple of months' time. He's pretty good on the ward, he comes late every now and then, sometimes, you know, stays quite late after work as well, he's very hard working, but when things get a bit tough, he gets quite nervous and quite tetchy. Fine. You think, that was quite easy, wasn't it? Quite bizarre how easily they managed to categorize you so objectively. And then someone else walks down the path. It's another friend. Well, let's say it's Ammar. And he goes, oh, I know Lats. I know Muhammad. He comes to Mehfil. He pretends he comes to Mehfil quite a lot. He doesn't come as often as he says he does. But, you know, he's good to have around when he's here. He's a bit of a strange fella. But it's nice having him over in Mehfil when he's around. And then more and more people come down this path and they each give you a different account of who you are as a person. 
objectively, which is the important part of this. And this is what brings me to this next point, is that the man just turns back to you, this old man, and goes, so who are you? And this is where it's important. The definition you're going to give him is based on what actually you've just observed, is that actually the society around you is what defines you. And that you are actually the product of not just your choices, but you are the product of your relationships and your contribution to society. And the reason why this is actually an important message, if you think about it this way, is one, it's the quality of the relationships that you make with the people around you. If you are a positive influence on not just the people around you, but if you have positive relationships with the people around you and you have a positive contribution to society, then overall, you as a person, who you are, that definition of who you are, will be positive. But it's not just the quality of the relationships you have, but it's also the quantity of them and the quantity of your contribution to society. If you had lots of people that knew you, that you, pro you provided for positively or contributed positively to, and had a large influence on society in a positive way, that feedback, that objective feedback that you're going to get from those people is going to be ever more bigger. And what's amazing about this is actually, they're not just going to tell you the good, they're also going to tell you the bad about you. And you're going to have a much more objective and accurate representation of who you are, the more, the more involved you are with society and the more you try and contribute to society. Um, and I think I'll leave it there, essentially. That's the message. So try and do as much as you can for the people around you, as best as well as you can. Thank you. Oh,